Come give ear to the tale of Rostam and Sohra, though it is a tale thick with tears. It started long ago when the great hero Rostam was hunting wild donkeys for sport. After a day of chase, he grew bored and hungry, so he captured one and ate it. By this time the sun was setting and Rostam was tired. He lay down to sleep and left his royal steed Rakesh to graze in the nearby pasture. In the night, seven knights of Turin set eyes upon Rakesh and wanted him for their own. They threw their ropes over the mighty horse and he fought like a lion. It took seven nights to subdue him and take him back to their city. When Rostam awoke, he was distraught for the fact that Rakesh was nowhere to be found. So he found Rakesh's tracks and followed them. He followed them through the sand until he came upon the gates of a great city. He went inside and was brought before the king. My horse has been stolen. If he is not restored to me, many heads shall be cut from their necks. I demand justice. He cried at the king and all the nobles gathered before him. The men took his threats very seriously. He was the mightiest warrior the world had ever known. He was Rostam. So the king agreed to have his men search for Rakesh and in the meantime invited Rostam to feast with them. Rostam was satisfied with this, so he agreed. He feasted with the king and they shared many bottles of wine and Rostam retreated to his chamber when the night was over but found he was not alone. A woman sat upon the bed, her gentle eyes on him as he entered. The woman explained that she was Tamine, daughter of the king. She told him of her many suitors, none of whom had ever seen her face, and she rejected all of them. Rostam was the stuff of legends though, a great warrior come to her home, and she said she would like nothing more than to have a son with Rostam's noble blood. The king gave them his blessings and they rejoiced. As a gift for the child, Rostam gave Tamina the most renowned stone in all the world. Cherish this jewel, and if you have a daughter, fasten it with her locks, and it will shield her from evil. If you have a son, then fasten it to his arm. He can wear it like his father. It will make him strong and brave, and bestow upon him the grace of speech. Several days later, the king brought word that Rostam's great steed, Rakesh, had been found. With his horse returned to him, Rostam knew it was time to take his leave. And so, Rostam left to live his life as a warrior far away. Nine months passed and the child was born. It was a boy and his mother named him Sohra. She fastened the jewel Rostam had given her to his arm and its magic caused him to grow quickly. When he was but one month old, he was like a child of 12. When he was five, he had mastered all the arts of war. And when he was 10, none in the land could resist him in games of strength. It was at this time that he asked the question that he had been wondering about for so long. I am taller and stouter than all of my peers. Tell me and my father, my race, my lineage. So that when my enemies ask me my sire, I may tell them with pride. You are the offspring of the great Rostam. Since God made the world, it has held no such power as your father, as Rostam. Bear his blood proudly, my son. She showed him a letter from his father and the golden jewels he had sent upon Sohrab's birth. But be cautious, Sohrab. You may be proud of your lineage, but you may not speak it. If Rostam's enemies find out you were his son, they would surely seek to kill you in order to bring sorrow upon your father. All men know the deeds of Rostam. 
Why did you keep this hidden from me for so long? I will go forth with an army of brave Turks. I will overthrow their leader and divide the power between my father and I. You, mother, will be queen of Iran! Sokhrat gathered many brave men, and they rode out to the land of his father where his men overthrew the first castle they came to. Sohrab let some of his people free and told them to summon the greatest warrior of the world, Rostam, for only he would be able to overpower him. His plan was to introduce himself to Rostam when he came and make him proud of his strength and prowess in battle. Make him proud of his son. Sohrab met Rostam outside the castle, and the two battled until the sun sank below the horizon. With no winner, Sohrab looked Rostam up and down. Are you the great Rostam? The one the tales speak of? And Rostam, embarrassed about being unable to beat such a young warrior, and not wanting the boy to underestimate his country, snapped. You think the great Rostam will waste his time with the likes of you? Oh no. He is far more powerful than I. I am but a warrior, come to retake these lands from you. Sohrab watched the man he was almost certain was his father set up a tent with his soldiers. Within the tent he could see many fine things, jewels, gold, leopard skins, and luxuries of that nature. When morning came, they faced each other once again. Please, sir, tell me now. Are you the great hero, Rostam? It is important, I know. No, I am not. I have told you before, Rostam could have killed you in a heartbeat. I am by far his lesser. The two battled for hours until finally Rostam gave a great swing of his sword and sent Sohrab crashing to the ground. The blade had not done much damage. However, as Sohrab's back hit the ground, it broke and he lay dying. You have bested me, brave warrior. Now I must tell you why I am here. I did not conquer this castle for empty glory like many fools would have thought. It was my goal to draw out my father, Rostam, the greatest hero of the earth. I have failed to meet him this day. But when he hears of my death, he will avenge me. He will drive his sword into your heart. Sohrab drew up his sleeve and sure enough, tied to his arm was the stone Rostam had given Tamina a decade before. Rostam fell to his knees and roared aloud in his sorrow. And Rostam watched his son die, watched him die by his very hand. When the sun arose the next day, Sohrab was dead and buried. And Rostam, so filled with anguish and grief, burned his tent and all his possessions. He burned his fine silks and his gold and his jewels. He watched all of it burn. For he was no longer Rostam the hero. He was Rostam the broken, Rostam the tormented. Rostam, the defeated.